How's it going, PD team? After a year of continually posting Redshift tutorials on this channel, it was time for a much needed break. We were able to achieve our goals of posting a fresh video every week and ended up actually posting 76. That's one and a half videos every week. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to watch our exhaustive catalog and don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when new material is released. I've got a great tutorial for you today, deep diving into the shader switch and how to expand its capability, creating loops, adding more input slots, etc. For example, if you have a product with maybe 20 different labels, for instance, for beginners, don't worry. This process is super simple. I'll cover everything you need to do to expand the shader switch with Redshift inside of Cinema 4D. With that being said, let's dive in. Okay, so before I get into the nitty gritty of this tutorial, I want to discuss the shader switch and how it works. So what we have here is the first input, which is the, the integer value that we use to switch between each of these slots. And you'll notice there's the last slot in the color data, we have a default shader. We also have the ability to offset the value. So if you're driving this programmatically and you need to just offset it, you can do that with this offset value. Now, this default shader input is really important. We need to understand how this works. So if I take this slider and I go to 10, since there's 10 slots, you'll see that once we go to the next number, it goes to white. And then if I go past that value, it maintains that white slot. So that's really important. And the same works in reverse. So if I go to negative one, it goes to that default. So if you go anything beyond these values here, it will default to the default slot. Now, that's really important for what we're going to be doing later in the tutorial, which is expanding the capability and adding more slots to this. Before we do that, I've got a demo I wanted to show you. But before we do that, I want to talk about how we can loop. So if we use a cloner and we want to have 50 clones of something, but only go through the first maybe three or four or five colors swatches, um, by default, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that's what I'm going to first show you how to do. So how we can loop and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with multiple clones. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so here we are with the cloner. And if I load up the IPR, you're going to see it just is playing the first shader, which is shader zero. And if I click next, you'll see it's going to go through the colors. Well, when you have a cloner, each of these clones has an index value. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. So right now, if I go here, you can see we have 10 slots. So we can take that and bring in this data. So what I'm going to do is I'll move this over, get our selector out of the way, and I'll double click. And I'm going to just pick in, type in user, and you can see it says user data. When we're doing clones, we're going to be using integers, so whole numbers. So I'm going to double click. Here's our integer user data. And we can go here and select a preset with this node selected. And you can see it says MoGraph. And then we could say object ID. So by doing that, it puts in the field, which is just a short code for object ID. So it's going to connect. So then we just plug this into our shader selector input, which is the first value. You can see it's plugged in here. Then I'll load up the IPR and you can see it's going through all those colors. Now, this is great, but you'll notice if I go above that 10 value, you can see it starts repeating the default value. So I'll leave that on 11 here. And what we want to do is we want to just loop through the first, let's say, three colors. So to do that, what we can use that's really useful is the modulo tool. So I'm going to type in mod. And what mod does is it basically just loops through a value that you select. So if I come in here, drag it into the input of the mod and then the output of the shader selector, you'll see by default, it's just playing through the first integer because it says one. So if I select three, it's going to go through the first three colors and then loop through. So that's really, really important. So what you could do is if you're building a shader where you wanted somebody to be able to make a choice, you can set a value here and then link it up as an option. That's the loop feature using the modulo tool. Let's dig deeper and expand the capabilities. So what I want to do is I want to expand and add more slots to this. And there's no way of adding more slots. I wish they would do that to where you can add more. By the way, if Maxon's listening, if you scroll down, there's a random color switch. This is like a fuller version of the shader switch, but it randomizes the shader selection. But you can see you can say added input. And I wish the shader switch had this capability, but it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my cloner here and I'm going to bring this up to 30. And what I want to do is I want to make 30 shader switch slots. So if I just plug in this shader switch, here, you can see it's just going to continue going out and I want to do more shaders. So if this is a product where a user can select which label, it's up to you. I'm going to expand the shader switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the shader switch and duplicate it. And remember how the default shader will take over the, from 10 and up. So what I can do is I can add by holding control and click the dot, not the keyframe. And I can plug in the output color of the second shader switch into the default here. And I can create a chain. So I'm going to add the default shader switch and do another one. I'm going to plug in this one into here. So there you go. Now what we need to do 
is we need to take our value and subtract it from here. So I'm gonna do add. I'm gonna take my user data, plug it in here, and then plug this into here. And then what we can do is we can say subtract 10, subtract 10, and then you can see it's now looping through the next set of slots. So we can come in here and do another one, take this, plug this in, and do subtract 20, and there you go. So now we have 30 slots that we can enter in. Pretty cool, right? So then what we can do is we can go in and expose all these properties or link these up using textures. So to add textures, we just click here, and then it loads up a shader slot input, and we can load up an image. So then what we can do is we can load up textures into each of these slots and link them up into a master control node. So just remember what it's doing is this is going from zero to 10 and then we're subtracting that value and whatever goes past this value goes into the default shader switch and then it's overtaken with this shader switch and then it's, we just subtract that value. This you can think of a kind of a reset to bring this back down to zero so it can take over this. In this example that I built out with these flipping screens, if we go to the shader here, you can see we're doing that technique of using the integer user data. It goes into the shader switch and then this one overrides 10 and up and this one does 20 and up to go from 10 20 30 and now we're just resetting the value before it goes into this shader switch so we're subtracting 10 and subtracting 20. it then gets brought into a base layer color layer and then we're masking it using this fall off field user data to basically blink on when these flip. We're then taking it and bringing it into another user color layer where we're just adding a couple different textures over the top to give it that LCD screen look. So we've got circles and we've got scan lines. And then it gets brought into the color and also the emission. So it looks illuminated. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.